G'day, I'm Andrew Hollis from the New Nation Party and I'm here today to talk with you about things that I found out from people in the local electorate. There's a lot of things that bother people but transport is number one. In fact, when I was a councillor, every single survey we ever did asking people to rank the issues in the city always came with transport and parking as number one and two. Everything else was way down the list. Today I'm talking about Lynx Ave and other local roads. Lynx Ave is an absolute disaster and it's a disaster created by bad planning and poorly executed roadworks. In this case, the B2B, which is the bypass and the overpass at Bayfair. It is already years overdue and in that time the local council felt that it was appropriate to use a local road that went past a school as also a bus route. Now because of ideology, the local council has decided that that will remain a bus route. They've made it so that local vehicles cannot use that residential road. It is now illegal to drive on Lynx Ave unless you are a resident of that street. They have put out now more than 1,500 tickets, each valued at $150. That stops people dropping their kids at school, picking their kids up from school, um, or even just using what is normally a residential road. But it doesn't stop the buses. It has become a bus only road. Now remember that most of the day those buses are entirely empty, as they are in most cities in New Zealand. That those buses that frequent that street are only doing it to bypass the mess that is the B2B. They are the rat runners. The buses themselves should be using the main roads, but they don't because of this insane push to keep empty buses on time. A way to fix, to fix Lynx Ave immediately and without question is to put the buses away, put them onto the main roads and the state highway and get them back out of the residential street. Number one fix to Lynx Ave is to stop the buses. Don't stop the cars, people have got the right to drive on the roads that they pay for. Stop the buses. The other roads that are in question here, apart from Cameron Road, which is a disaster brewing, heading towards a quarter of a billion dollars worth of overspend, but that's another story for another day, is the Hyrene Bridge. Successive councils and successive governments have ignored a bridge that was built in 1957. A bridge that at the time was wonderful and it, it, it solved a big problem about getting people from Welcome Bay and Mangatapu and Ohauiti into town. The bridge is now 50, sorry, 70 years past its use by date nearly and it needs to be upgraded. It needs to become a four lane bridge with four lanes heading down 15th Ave which is Tauranga's, one of Tauranga's most important arterial routes. It joins the link roads, the, the, the loop roads, and it moves an enormous amount of traffic every day. Successive governments and councils refuse to do anything about it. And all again because of ideology. We shouldn't be driving, say councils, except people keep ignoring what councils want. The council wants us riding bikes, walking and taking the bus. But from Welcome Bay to downtown Tauranga, is a normal 25 minute drive by car, much longer with the traffic jams at the rush hour, but it can take as long as an hour in a bus. People aren't going to use the bus until it is quicker than a car. Council's taken that challenge on and is deliberately congesting our roads. That's got to stop and roads have to be purpose built to last us another 50 years. There's no reason to not do that in this city. Our growth rate is so slow that by the time we are big enough to support public transport, it will be close to 2080 to 2100. It's 60 odd years away before we're even close to having a city that will support public transport. And this isn't me talking, these are papers that have been written about public transport. You can look them up, they're on the internet. We are not building our local roads in a sensible way. We're building them to stop people driving. That has to stop. The only way to stop that is to vote better people in 
at this election and next year's election. It's voting time now and you get the choice on who to put in. If you put in the same people from the Labour or the National Party, you're going to get the same result. Think about who you're voting for. I'm Andrew Hollis, New Nation Party. Thank you.